from West Texas shale to drilling rigs far offshore. Offshore rules, we need a hand on a handrail, okay? From Angola to Australia. That right there is the jetty. You're looking at the inside of an LNG tank. Our thirst for energy has pushed Chevron to almost every corner of the globe. We go where the opportunities are best. Two hands, good job, Eric. The giant company is active in 180 countries. It is the largest resource project in Australia. Pumping almost 2.6 million barrels every day. These are challenging times for big oil. Nobody in the oil business loves $60 crude. Fracking has upended the global market. Renewables like solar and wind power are getting cheaper. And no one knows when or even if crude prices will rebound. At the end of the day, this is a commodity business. Yet Chevron is doubling down on fossil fuels, investing tens of billions on a bet the world will guzzle oil and gas for decades to come. We take you inside Chevron in this Bloomberg special report. This is Midland, Texas. In the mid-1980s, it lived through an oil price collapse. On the main street downtown, you can still see the impact. 30 years later, Midland is caught up in another bust. Prices have plunged by 60% in just nine months. Drilling rigs are being idled. Jobs more than 50,000 to date are disappearing across the country. Fracking is why this is happening. Hydraulic fracturing is the technology that has unlocked billions of barrels of American crude. The biggest producers are holding up better in this slump than the wildcatters are, but they still feel the pain. Just look at Chevron. The company had to stop buying back stock and slashed its capital spending plan by $5 billion. Actually, we have CEO John Watson didn't have a choice. When a good chunk of your revenue disappears overnight, uh, you do have to take stock of that. And we are taking some actions uh, to reduce our spending profile, finish the projects that are under construction, pace the others to see if we can bring costs down. We keep a very strong balance sheet so that we can withstand the ups and downs of the commodity markets. There are, there are some that maybe haven't been in the business as long, that haven't seen the price excursions down that we have. I've seen five drops of 50% or more in the price of oil in my 35 years. It's impossible for oil companies today to thrive in $60 oil. Yep. They can withstand the pressure for a lot longer than most of their peers. They would be hurt but the smaller guys would be killed. Horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing has completely changed the energy mix, the outlook, and the perception. That is a game changer that will likely change the industry forever. Fracking is why America now produces 70% more oil than it did five years ago, and almost as much as Saudi Arabia. It's why OPEC can't control prices anymore. It's why the U.S. may at some point lift a 40-year-old ban on crude exports. Here's how fracking works. A well is drilled into sedimentary rock, typically shale. Water, chemicals, and sand are injected at high pressure, fracturing the rock and freeing trapped oil and natural gas. The government estimates that the U.S. has 48 to 58 billion barrels of recoverable shale oil. That's enough to produce at current rates for at least 14 years and those estimates are probably conservative. America has a lot of shale formations. The Bakken in North Dakota, the Marcellus in Pennsylvania and New York, the Woodford in Oklahoma, and in Texas, the Barnett, the Eagle Ford, and the Permian Basin. Chevron's history in this basin goes back to the early 1920s, almost at the start of the basin. We are fortunate that we have been here for a long time and have been here consistently this the basin has seen a lot of ups and downs uh, in terms of uh, production. It had been on a, a gradual and a kind of slow decline, and uh, then a number in the industry recognized that unconventional development that had started in the Barnett uh, outside of Fort Worth and Dallas could maybe be applied here, and it turned out that uh, that was exactly right. And um, 
we are in you know, a renaissance in the Permian Basin today. No oil company has more land in the Permian Basin than Chevron. Yet Chevron missed the first wave of fracking success. The independent producers were faster and more aggressive. The shale revolution came on so fast. Let's be clear, so far the majors do have not played well. But I think we have to think about how the large integrated oil companies work in the time horizon in which they think vis-a-vis -vis or, or compared to smaller independent companies and it comes down to long-term versus short-term. The major integrated oil companies are superb at managing for the long-term. They think about things in 25 to 50-year time segments. Now Chevron is finally catching up. It's building a new headquarters in Midland after outgrowing the one that's been there for decades. And it's developing almost two million acres in the area. The shales in the Permian Basin are prolific, but they're complex. They're stacked, what we call stacked pays, and we've wanted to understand those pays, if you will, and then produce them as efficiently as we can. We've learned a lot, both from uh, the wells that we've drilled uh, on our acreage, but also the wells that some of our competitors have, have drilled. Because we've been here so long, we're not in a a drill or drop sort of situation. We, we don't have a, a clock that's ticking on our activity. Uh, we have the ability to be very disciplined in our approach. Why is discipline more important than maximum production? Discipline's important because at the end of the day, this is a commodity business. And in order to create high earnings, create, to have a high margin, you have to be disciplined in where you place wells. Um, the cost of execution associated with doing that and what you ultimately recover out of the wells. What this uh, basin offers is relatively short cycle time investments. Uh, so the wells that we drill here are drilled in a matter of days. They're put on production in a matter of weeks. And um, so the cycle time associated with that is a little different than our major capital project. But fracking has its own set of challenges. Onshore shale has an enormously rapid decline rate, upwards of 50% in the first year. And when you have to keep increasing your drilling to maintain a production rate with a decline rate at that level, you're going to drill and drill and drill and never keep up. Unlike the gushers of years past, shale wells run dry quickly. That's why no major oil company can depend on fracking alone. They need bigger, more reliable deposits like the ones in the Gulf of Mexico. In December 2014, just as oil prices were plunging, Chevron began pumping oil at Jack St. Malo, a $7.5 billion project a few miles offshore. At the same time... Another thing out here, offshore rules. We need a hand on a handrail, okay? The company was putting the finishing touches on Bigfoot at a shipyard in Corpus Christi. Bigfoot is a $5.1 billion major capital project. This is the biggest thing I've been on. I don't know of anything that's probably got more engineering in it, more technical from our hull design to the, to the power generation that we, that we have out here. Bigfoot is 450 feet tall, kind of like a floating skyscraper. In March, it was towed into position 225 miles south of New Orleans. This is the drilling rig I take it. You're right, this is our drilling rig. It has a 2 million pound hook load capacity. Then something went wrong. Chevron planned to anchor Bigfoot with 16 yellow cable-like tendons. In late May, six of them lost buoyancy. Then another three sank. All nine are sitting a mile down on the ocean floor. If you're into the long-term deep water offshore, let's say, that's a different business. That's a much higher technical set of requirements, much higher risk, and, and you'd better operate to manage to the risks that you face in the deep water offshore, or you end up with a BP Macondo disaster. Now, Chevron is towing Bigfoot back to shallow water. The company can't say when the platform will start pumping oil or reach capacity of 75,000 barrels a day, only that it won't meet a startup target of December 2015. Next, what John D. Rockefeller did for Chevron and why it's so different from the other oil giants. We're underweighted, for example, in, in Russia and the Middle East relative to some of our competitors. Inside Chevron Returns. <laughs>